Again, cost of gain in background in cattle in 2013. <sighs> a lot of things are affected by cost of gain. We've got the animal side and we've got the feed side. Um, you can't really talk about cost of gain and come down until you kind of understand those things. Let me just reflect over them a little bit. The size and age of the animal can affect cost of gain. Usually really young calves, young animals, have really high feed efficiencies. In other words, they don't take much feed to put on a pound of gain, so they can have some really good uh, gain abilities. And usually with gainability, you might decrease your cost of gain. But on the other hand, the cost of feed for young animals is pretty high. The price of milk is pretty expensive. So cost of gain is determined by the price of the feed as well as how the animal responds. Is. As an animal gets older, usually they get bigger, and as they get bigger and older, their cost of gain usually increases just because it takes more to stay alive in response to how much gain they get. Some previous feeding history, you know, if you buy green calves, you put them on a background, they're going to be fed. They usually have a, a lot of performance left in them. They're kind of green, not have enough uh, nutrients in them, so consequently their cost of gain usually decreases. Fleshy cattle... Situations to show that their cost of grain is high. Stunted cattle, their cost of gain is high. Sickness affects cost of gain, it increases it. Implants, those uh, hormonal compounds that will increase rate of gain, that usually decreases your cost of gain. Of course, if you have wind, snow, mud, bedding, uh, we all know that those affect cattle. Uh, Vern Anderson's done research here at the RE Center at Carrington that has put numbers on how a quarter pound of gain can be affected by wind or snow or mud or the effect of bedding because it really does make a difference on, on how cattle perform. Obviously, with bedding, there's a cost that goes along with that too. Now let's just talk about feed. That's what I like to usually talk about, and that's what the bulk of this talk will be is, is the feed things. Cost of gains affected by feed because usually as you increase the energy density of the feed, you can put more feed into the calf, he'll gain more. So grains usually have a cheaper cost of gain than what hay would. That's not always the case, but that's kind of the thing. Feed additives like rumensin or Bovatec can improve feed conversions just because of the way they improve uh, the digestibility within the rumen. If you process and mix, also known as totally mixed rations, Using a mixer wagon, that'll improve feed efficiency in cattle. And of course, if you buy a thousand pounds of grain, a thousand bushels of grain, and you only end up putting 950 bushels in the feed bunk because there's waste and loss, that cost has to go somewhere, and that goes against the cost of feeding cattle. So, if you increase your waste and feed loss, that increases your rate of gain as well. There's a lot of Differences in cattle performance out there. That first calf that I look at really hasn't missed a meal yet. And the two cattle in back, um, they're kind of hanging back from the feed bunks. So when you, if you actually looked at individuals, there are differences out there amongst our individuals. They're just not all the same. So obviously when you look at cost of gain, history, how cattle perform, um, kind of explains why some cattle are bid up higher at a cell ring than others because they know how they will perform on certain rations later on. We do a project out here at the RE Center where we feed cattle out to finish. They come from the Dakota Feeder Calf Show. Put a plug in for it. It actually starts this Friday, Saturday out at Turtle Lake. And uh, I think last year there was 40-some guys that consigned calves to this particular project, groups of three or four. And I, I include this as an example here. We got the top pen of calves. They did really well. Okay, they made some money, if you can see the, the slide there. Now, the top five didn't make that much. There's, it was quite a bit less, but I do this for a point. The bottom pen of calves gained okay, not as good as the top ones, of course, but they had quite a bit of a loss. If you look at all pens, um, they gained an average of three pounds a day, and last year was not a good year for buying high-priced calves and feed high-priced corn through them and then sell them at a lower price. So not all the times does finishing work out. Last year there was a loss. We just paid a lot for them at the beginning because these guys still owned them. But my point here is it didn't take much of an average daily gain increase to affect profit in these cattle. And that keeps showing up year after year after year. So this issue that Carl talked about is average daily gain, and I'll talk about too really does show up. So little changes in average daily gain seem to follow through. Well, I've 
have to admit I'm not an economist. We'll let Tim Petrie talk about that, but I'm talking about feed costs again. So I'll, I'll talk about these costs again based uh, from kind of a nutritionist viewpoint. Feed is the biggest expense in feeding cattle, other than the cost of cattle, of course. It determines the gain as you increase the energy density of the gain. Grain of the feed, you'll get more gain out of the cattle. If you increase their feed intake, you'll get more gain out of the cattle. If you keep them on feed longer, you'll get more gain out of the cattle. That may affect the cost of gain. Uh, veterinary, of course, it's usually a small cost per head. But I remember the conversation I had a few years ago with a fellow that was always doing closeouts, and he finally went for 2 to 3% deads to 5% deads. And he wondered why his cost of gain just went right to the roof. Well, it did, because just a few deads will profoundly affect your, your costs. We all know that. Dead animals cost a lot. But when you do the measurements of cost of gain, those are animals that, don't, that you paid for that you don't get to sell. Uh, yardage, that's a cost that goes into cost of gain as well. Um, you usually done it on a per head basis because an animal's in the feed yard every day. But you can dilute it out over into total feed costs on a per ton basis. It's a wide range. Some people might have it at $0.10. Cents. Other people might have it at a $1. Um, I did some numbers with the Farm Business Management Group a couple of years ago, and we looked at yardage costs for cow herds. I was surprised it came up to be $0.50 cents just to keep a cow around the farm place to cover the costs of water, feeding, machinery, insurance, labor, etc. That didn't include feed. So back when we thought $0.25 cents yardage was you know, kind of a, a high price, us ranchers were paying $0.50 cents and didn't even think about it because it wasn't something we actually paid for, only if we tracked. Interest, um, you know, it's usually a relatively small cost in these budgets. Um, price protection actually is also a small cost. When you look at you're only spending $20 or $30 for price protection, but when it comes to feed costs, that's in the hundreds of dollars. So a lot of things come together when you calculate cost of gain. I'll try to, I'm really focusing on feed cost initially. Um, we do have a a website that has a break-even calculator, just type or Google calf web, and you can go in and put all these numbers into this calculator, and it calculates the cost of gain or feed cost of gain for you. It's uh, pretty effective. Well, let's switch over and talk about feed cost. We all like feeding cattle. Well, I don't know if we all like feeding cattle, but I like feeding cattle, and uh, it's rewarding to see them gain and, and put on weight. So, Here's a concept we all got to remember, and sometimes we tend to forget it because it's kind of a dilution thing. Just like me, you, animals, we all require a certain amount of energy, protein, vitamins, minerals, water, air, just to stay alive and healthy and to maintain our weight. Now, some of us like me should lose weight, but on the other hand, it costs us so much to just keep breathing every day. That requires food, requires feed, and we call it a maintenance cost. So I got some numbers down below here that I'm trying to drive this home with. So you got a 600 pound calf, you feed him 11 pounds of feed. Tomorrow he weighs 600 pounds. He didn't gain anything because he used all 11 pounds to keep him going. Now at 9 cents a pound, that's $180 a ton. That's just not a grass hay diet. That's got a little bit of corn and everything else mixed in with it. So we're actually limit feeding him at 11 pounds per day. Cost him 99 cents. That's what the 11 pounds of 9 cents cost him almost a dollar a day just to breathe, just for the value of keeping them alive. So you got your feed cost for no gain at 99 cents. Okay. Only way that could get worse is if he died. Okay. Now, here's another comment that comes in with the this concept called energy for gain. It costs so much to keep you alive every day, but it also costs to put on weight. Now, the neat part about this is that the energy for maintenance actually takes more energy per pound than it does for energy of gain. We're actually more efficient in putting gain on than we are maintaining the body. It's the way things, you do the math and you uh, do the research that way and that's what it comes out to be. So that's actually to our favor when we're background in cattle. Now if you wanted a cow herd that was efficient, you'd like to see that not top number be dropped a lot lower and do research to try to figure out how we can get a lower energy content, a, lo a lower energy uh, uh, maintenance for cows, but this is how relatively how it speaks. So as I said, the animal's more efficient on putting on weight than just maintaining it. So if we take that same ration, same calf, 600 pounds, eats 15 pounds of feed, tomorrow he weighs 602 pounds and a half, he gained two and a half pounds of gain. 
It took 15 pounds of feed at 9 cents or $1.30 to gain 2.5. His feed cost per gain was 54 cents. Straightforward. Not bad. Okay, what happens if we increase the cost of gain from 9 cents to 12 cents? Well, actually, though, I'm going to impose something else because usually when we increase the cost of feed, we've increased the amount of energy in the ration, and we went from a 67 TDN ration up to an 81. We just increased the grain portion of the ration quite a bit because uh, we're, we want them to gain more than 2.5 pounds. So remember, we were at 2.5 pounds, cost gains of 54 cents. Now we got a 600-pound calf. He's eaten 15 pounds of feed, but it's a higher energy feed ration, and he's gaining 3.75 pounds a day. And Jerry, somehow you uh, changed the screen from my computer to you. And now I've got uh, Carl Dolan's talk. <laughs> I don't know if I need to go back to, to mine or not now. We're going to try this. Show content. There we go. We're back. Um, so we got a. Carl, your uh, slides six, were not advancing. Your slides were not advancing, so we were playing with it, but. Oh, maybe it was me. Well, we'll find out here. Keep working. Um, here we've got a 603 pound calf, 3.75 gallon gain, 15 pounds of feed, but the feed costs 12 cents a pound. Now it costs $1.80 to put that three, seven, three, and a quarter, three and three quarter pounds of gain on. The total feed cost is now 48 cents. So in this example, as we increase the feed cost to gain, as we increase the, the gain, we also increase the dollars put in the calf, but the net result was it was cheaper per pound to gain for feed. Now, using that logic, we've got to be careful of this. Well, let's go ahead and buy a creep feed that's got a... I shouldn't have said that. Let's buy a feed that uses a lot of energy, that has a lot of energy, um, but it's going to be 15 cents a pound rather than 12 where it was. And let's see here. Hopefully we're still calling, following with there, Jerry. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Anyway, in this example, we still maintain the 375 gain, but the cost of feed was up higher at, 50, at 15 cents or $300. $300 a ton, and our feed cost is now $0.60. Cents. So in reality, we might have more pounds to sell, but it costs us more to put on the weight. Um, you got to do the math to find out whether that was a good deal or not. Last year, our feed costs were really high. Corn was at $6.5 a bushel back in October 12, and it got worse. Grass hay you couldn't find for $80 a ton. This year, we're at 420 a bushel at the ethanol plants. That's what they're offering. Um, alfalfa hay, it sounds like that's a rapidly de, uh, disintegrating market right now. If you go over to Minnesota and check out what the uh, Salk Center hay markets are, you'll see that they're actually almost, um, for really good quality hay, it would be higher than that. For this type of hay, it might be $40 a ton more than what we have here. In other words, the freight costs from here over to there. Um, wheat mids at Carrington are $1.45 or $145 a ton right now. Barley malt sprouts are at $160. Um, distillers grains are at $165. The market's a lot lower than it was last year. So every year you got to do this math on feed value, cost per pound of nutrient. Carl Dolan was doing some of this. I've got four ingredients here that I look through. First one's canola meal, then wheat mids, corn grain distillers. If you're looking for a cheap energy source, you look over under cost per pound of TDN, the right-hand column. And you find out that DDGs is winning the game right now at $160 a ton. Corn is $150 a ton, not far behind, and wheat mids are right in there too. Canola meal, that's not an energy source, it's a protein source. So you wouldn't expect it to be cheap energy, but when you look at the cost per pound of protein, it's reasonable, but like Carl said earlier, distiller's grains is a really cheap source of crude protein as well. So you get the energy, you basically get the energy for the cost and the protein's free, which makes it a competitive feed to haul home. Okay, that's how you calculate feed costs. Um, I've got a hand set of rations here to look through. 
Here we got a ration, 10 pounds of grass hay, 10 pounds of barley malt sprouts, pretty easy. Only gains 2 pounds a day. Our feed efficiencies are 10 pounds of feed per 1 pound of gain. TDN value is 63%, or if you're talking net energy for gain value, it's 0.37. Some of us think in the cow world of TDN, others think in the feedlot world of NEG. So if you're looking for NEGs, the 37 would be a 37 meg ration. Feed costs 60 cents per pound of gain. Let's uh, just switch to a different ration. Grass hay at six pounds, alfalfa hay at four, wheat mids at ten. We're going to two and a two and seven tenths pound gain. Feed per pound of gain improved to seven point four. TDN seventy percent. NEG out of a forty five. Feed cost went down to forty three. That's given those prices. So looking at this deal, huh? Roughing them at two pounds a day deserves to be rethought a little bit and look at two point seven five. Not only do you have more weight to sell, but you got cheaper feed costs. Okay, let's go to grass hay, wheat mids, and limestone. You've got to add a calcium carbonate or calcium by the limestone because wheat mids are really high in phosphorus. And if you don't do that, you'll end up with urinary calculi, and that's a bad deal, stones and cattle. So, But your gain now increases 2.88. Feed conversions are 7 to 1. TDN's up to 71. And 46 NEG ration, 42 cents. Hmm. A lot of different ways to feed a calf using different feeds. Just do the math to find out where they're at. Okay, that's three. Let's go to a few more. Here's a ration that's got a little bit of grass say, a little bit of alfalfa hay, corn grain, wheat mids. Average daily gain, 2.68. Feed conversions, seven and a half to one. Cost of gain was 43 cents. Okay, alfalfa hay and corn silage. And I think I used a corn silage at $40 a ton. Um, of course, your feed to gain is 16.8 because you're feeding wet feed. This is an as-fed type deal. Gains 2.3, um, you're for feeding a 42 meg ration, 43 cents, okay, 44 cents. Well, here's another one, grass hay, alfalfa hay, wheat mids, corn grain, four and four of the hay and six and six of the corn grain, end up with three pounds a day gain, better feed conversions, 50 megacal ration, 40 cents. So far, that was our cheapest one, okay? Let's keep moving through here. Here's a simple one, alfalfa hay and corn grain. If you lived in Iowa, that's probably be your choice. Well, you got distiller's grains too, but two and a half pounds a day gain, 47 cent feed cost. In re it's not bad, but it's not as cheap as the other ones. Alfalfa hay, corn grain, a 30% supplement, just because you're wanting a three and a half a pound, or three and a third pound gain. Um, that's at 46 cents. Hmm. So to buy a supplement, feed a little bit more grain, you're gonna end up with more gain than the calves. Cost of gain's the same as if you just went with a high uh, roughage type ration of the alfalfa hay and corn grain. And we've got another one down there up to 3.6 pounds a day gain where you're feeding a lot more grain and your feed cost of gain goes down even more. Okay, here's a couple more using distiller's grains. Grass hay at a pound, 1.15 pounds of grass hay and 5 pounds of distillers um, gives you 1.8 pounds a day gain. Now that's pretty poor grass hay guys that's not high quality grass hay that's kind of the crp stuff 11 to 1 feed conversion a cost of gain 56 cents um, if we go up there to seven pounds of grass hay seven pounds of corn and six pounds of silage grains we're getting three and a half pounds a day gain and our cost of gain reflects it it's less it's a 54 megacal ration um, a lot of differences out here on the type of rations we can feed your cost of gain goes down but you notice you got to look at these pretty close to find out what type of a, uh, a ration you want, or you can put a multitude of things together to get a target as to where you want to feed the calves at. Just because you're feeding one thing doesn't mean it's the cheapest thing to feed. You might want to consider something else. But if you raise it all, you've got your feed costs fixed, you've got your inventory, there's things to add to it, like the protein supplement if you need it, to increase your rate of gain and make a balanced ration to uh, decrease your cost of gain. In general, as I increase the gain, we always got better feed efficiency and our cost of gains always went down. Well, here's four comparisons. Um, I'm looking at cost of gain, break even, profit comparisons. I use the CAF web uh, break even calculator. I took 575 pound calves and fed them to 750, pound, 750 pounds. I background them for different average daily gains for this example. You've seen the rations earlier. Uh, first one you're using is 1.8 average daily gain with 15 pounds of grass hay and 5 pounds of distillers. Okay. Um, another one's 2.23 for 8 pounds of alfalfa, 1 alfalfa and 31 pounds of corn silage. 
Then you see two and eight eight or uh, two point nine average daily gain with quite a bit of wheat mids, and then the last one where we got quite a phenomenal rate of gain at three point six um, using grass hay corn and distillage grains. Now in general, all these rations need a trace mineral, vitamin, ionophore, coccidiostat, supplement added to them just to round it off. But your major feed ingredients are what it, what's described there. So hopefully you can see this table. There's a lot of numbers on here, but there's a lot of things to look at. Remember, they all came in at the same weight. They all went out at the same weight. They had different average daily gains. Now I priced them at a dollar seventy-five, and I think I looked at Napoleon's market today, and I think I might be a little bit shy after one day. So um, this market keeps changing. That's why we got to keep doing these numbers all the time. I used an out price of one sixty-five for seven fifties. The future market's been up and down a little bit, so um, use that number. Average daily gain increases as we go from left to right. Cost of the ration increases as we go from left to right. Now, the alfalfa corn silage ration is only 52, but remember, it, it's mostly water, so there's a difference there. Feed to gain, you can see that. Yardage, I put it 35 cents per head per day. We had other expenses of $29. There's actually in the in there's a interest expense included in here, too, in the break-even. Um, price protection at $20 a head. Pounds gained are all 180. So the first group's going to be there for three months. The next group's going to be there for 78 days. The next group for two months. And the other one's barely just, wow, you put them on feed and sell them in the next five weeks. Barely getting over sickness. Well, these are some things to think about. Our feed cost went down as we increased the energy density of our ration. Our feed cost of feed and yardage per pound to gain went down correspondingly too. Our cost of gain went down as we increased our gain. Our break even went down as we increased our gain. And our profit, yeah. So there's a fine line here when you're looking at all this where you want to maximize performance in your calves if you're selling them, not for uh, grass calves next summer, but selling them this winter of where you want to feed them at so you don't get them too fleshy, too fast, too soon. But you can see by the math that... Um, Putting on weight always supports it. I find it interesting. I talk with my colleague here, uh, Steve Metzger, in the Farm Business Program, and every year he's going, you know, for 20 years, as we increase our rate of gain, our profits always got better. And uh, this, today, this math pays out the same question, too. So, in summary, let me just say feed cost to gain depends upon the animal's ability to gain. Of course, if he's healthy and growthy and, and uh, been put on a good leg, not sick. Um, He's got propensity to really grow for you. Look at the cost of the feed. Do the price calculations for everything and use the feeds that give you the most amount of energy for the least amount of expense. And obviously, as you increase the energy content of the ration, you increase your rate of gain. Like I said, as you feed cost usually goes down as your rate of gain increases. Um, but I have to always put this in. You know, you got to avoid cattle from getting too fat or fleshy, too overconditioned. You know. So in other words, if you're feeding a high rate of gain ration, be sure to look at the calves and make sure you didn't feed them two weeks too long and uh, put them in a different scenario. So with that, I'll take any questions if there's any questions. And uh, if not, we'll move on to our next speaker.